All right, welcome everyone to another session, uh, weekly session of the Slytherin streaming uh, series. And my name is Surtur from Slytherin, and I'll be your host for tonight as we'll be having a look at our upcoming game, Gary Grigsby's War in the West. This is a um, highly uh, strategical uh, turn based war game, um, very realistic, lots of detail. And we're gonna uh, jump into the uh, in the in the early phases for you uh, get uh, get you familiar with the basics of the game, and we're going to show you a couple of turns of gameplay. Now, with us in the chat tonight are also um, some of the developers of the game. We have the famous Gary Grigsby himself as uh, Grigsby uh, here in the forums. We have um, Joel Billings as well as a Jap Gamer here. Um, you'll be able to uh, find Eric Rudens as well. Um, and they'll be able to uh, help you answer any questions you might have during this stream. Um, again, this is focused on getting you to uh, to know the basics of the game and helping you to jump right in as soon as you'll be able to get your own hands on the game later this week. So we are here in the uh, main menu. And first of all, we're going to take a quick look at the scenario list to uh, get an idea of what scenarios this game comes with. Uh, I should know in advance, uh, notice in advance, if there's anything uh, sound-wise or anything else that doesn't work for the stream, please let me know via the chat and I'll try and fix it. So we're going to click at the pick scenario uh, screen for now to give you an idea. And here already we can see two introductory scenarios. Uh, again, this f game is focused on the uh, war in the West or the Western Front from uh, 1943 to 1945. So we have the uh, battles going on in, um, in Italy, in France, um, in the lower countries, and of course Germany. So here we can see the uh, campaign. Uh, we have two introductory scenarios. We have some shorter scenarios um, that will allow you to, to battle it out, or, or shorter um, or smaller settings. So not entire campaigns, you don't control the full war but rather uh, secluded areas. Um, these are great to, to help you get to know the game and also great for relatively quicker competitive battles online. Um, and of course, to top it all off, we have um, the larger campaigns. And this is where you, um, depending on the side you want to play, you can play both the Axis and the Allies, where you control the entire Western Front. Um, you will have to take into account whether uh, production, uh, supplies, etc. And we're going to jump into detail uh, that a bit later. I'd like to take, uh, first before we jump in though, I'd like to take a quick look at the game options uh, because uh, people who are familiar with War in the East will see a lot to, to recognize here. Um, one interesting uh, or very uh, button very much worth mentioning is the Eastern Front Control. And behind this little box lies a huge feature in a sense that the Eastern Front, while it's not um, present in the game in a sense that you can play it as if you can move your troops up in the Western Front with the uh, axes against the Western Allies, um, the game is uh, simulating what happens on the Eastern Front dynamically. So if you attack uh, Eastern Front control, it means that the Axis player will be able to determine the amount of troops and the type of troops stationed in the Eastern Front trying to hold that stable um, while gathering troops uh, as much as he can to the Western Front in order to fend off the Allied invasion. So you'd be juggling troops around, as it were, um, in the most tactical way possible or most strategic way possible. And this is very much what, of course, historically happened as well. So this is a very cool feature to have in and really help you still to give the Axis player feel like he is um, fighting a war on two fronts. Tonight, however, we'll not be uh, looking at one of the grand campaigns since it's basically just uh, too huge uh, to, to show you. Um, so we're going to jump into one of the introductory scenarios. And we're going to be playing the allies, so we're going to click on the axis to make them computer. We keep the difficulty normal, and uh, we're going to jump right in. So we're going to pick the scenario here again. We're going to select Operation Husky, which is the invasion of Sicily. Um, during the uh, summer of uh, 1944. And the scenario runs from the 3rd of July until the 20th of August. 
the scenario length is seven turns, and we have uh, we are tasked with taking uh, Sicily as the allies. So we're launching our invasion from Africa, and we are tasked with taking uh, Sicily from the Italian and German garrison. So we're gonna load the selected scenario. Yes. And we are in, before we gonna look at this, let look at the map a bit and at the area we will be fighting on. So our troops are he around here at the northern coast of Africa. The enemy troops are here and in Italy and it's our job to, to cross the Strait of Sicily uh, and capture the island itself. Um, selecting the right map filter here, you can see that the red is enemy territory, the rest is ours. Right, so zooming in again. And uh, the first thing uh, you will notice is um, uh, Warndi's veterans actually will probably find a lot uh, familiar with uh, War in the West. But one of the huge things we have to do now first, and that's a huge new feature, is the uh, setting up the air directives. The air war in uh, War in the West is um, as detailed as the ground war is. Um, so that's a huge step forward uh, from the previous game. Knowing, however, that not everyone wants to be bothered with actually fighting the air war uh, in, in the same complete detail, um, we have created a tool for you that allows you to let the AI um, control the air uh, troops if you want, but you will be giving the main directives. So this is what we're looking at now, is the automatic air directive uh, creation. So we have our tactical air command and our strategic air command, and we're going to give them directives based on um, what we think is important. First of all, there's a, a special um, button here which says amphibious support south, and this is a special button that lets the AI know that we're going to start off an amphibious assault and that it should really focus um, its efforts on this specific area. So since we are going to launch the invasion uh, in the first turn, we're going to click it on. Already you can see that um, the buttons have changed here, saying that the uh, priorities have changed based on the selection we just made, but we can fine-tune it if we want to. In this case, for example, I'd say that railways are not as um, important in, uh, on Sicily as they are in other regions. So I don't want the AI to be bothered um, to engage too many railroads. As you can see, we have the type of um, target or the type of mission uh, here. And here we have the priorities going from no, uh, none to low to medium to high. I like the interdiction. Uh, it prevents the enemy from moving effectively and, and gives good ground attack. But in the first turn, I actually think I also want to focus on the enemy airfields and trying to take out as much of their planes while they're still on the ground. This is all for the tactical air uh, command. And for the strategic air, we're going to be uh, a bit similar. Of course, as you can see, everything is focused on the southern front, since the northern front is not presented in this specific scenario. So we're going to keep that high uh, the way it is. We're going to focus the airfields like it's set here. We don't want to care too much with the real ways and the real yards. Instead, let's have some extra interdiction. So this is the way you can um, let the AI create basic missions. So when we're now clicking uh, set air directives, um, the AI will ask us confirmation. We say yes, and it will uh, take our input and um, use that to distribute the different missions among the different air commands we have. So now that this is done, we can have a look at the uh, air summary screen and we can see that the different commands have different uh, options or different tasks set. So we have a superiority for the Malta Air Command. Strategic Air Force is mainly focused uh, which is, uh, on the ground attack and our tactical air force is doing a uh, um, different stuff, including like recon, air superiority, as well as ground support and ground attack. Um, if you want to change these, alter these, or, or micro them completely, you can do that as well. Here we see a number of different filters. and uh, We're able to click on these, uh, for example, um, set the, uh, um, let's take the ground attack mode, and we can see here our different air commands. We have our troop carrier command, which is not very useful in this particular case, um, since it 
mainly consists or only consists in this case even of troop carriers of course we have our coastal air force which will do uh, naval interdiction by default so we don't want to be bothered with that too much also they're not units that have the greatest range um, but we could select our tactical air force for example and here we can set different missions uh, we can select our own targets so um, we have our ground attack here we set the ground attack we select the target hex and we create a mission immediately. So now we have created a mission for this specific air group um, by ourselves using the um, uh, air directive AI screen as a um, as a basis. We can further tweak this. For example, it's really focused around this hex now. If we want to make the ground attack um, not just this hex, but perhaps the bigger area. Um, we can change that as well. We click on the area screen and we can select the radius in which we want it to take place. So six means that we'll, well, six hexes around the area and you will see it will cover most of Italy. If, of course, you think you have uh, made some mistakes, you've done too much wrong, you can always run again the air directive from here and it will rectify. So, having set our uh, basic air orders, um, we're going to set rectify our air directives, because usually my missions are, uh, are not much more uh, much smarter than the AIs, um, and we're going to execute them. And this will start off the first phase uh, of the turn. So now we can see that the air war is taking place. Uh, you can s check for yourself the amount of detail you want here. Um, this is a relatively detailed screen, though. Uh, we see all the individual air missions going uh, to their targets, and we can see the results they do. You can make it even slower if you want to, and see the individual dogfights taking place um, above here in the menu. But usually you want to uh, speed it up. This is also something we're going to do in order to show you a lot more of the game than just the air stuff. But the detail is there if you wanted to, you can even pass the game and, and really analyze what's happening. So I'm going to press hotkey 1, which decreases the detail of the message level, and we see um, the air missions being sped up. So here we see all the different missions that we place. We are slowly uh, getting more information on the enemy positions as well to the uh, activity taking place. We we'll actually see some counters fielding, meaning that we know the type of units present there, although perhaps not the size or strength or readiness. So here we get our summary um, saying, like, what did each mission do? Did they lose aircraft? Did aircraft get damaged? Um, how many rays or sorties were there? What was the weather? Well, we're in the Mediterranean in midsummer, so usually you have quite decent weather uh, for your uh, air missions. And we can also get even more detail by looking at the different statistics here, and where we can see like how many victory points that we claim by killing enemy aircraft. And we see that we killed aircraft for more victory points than the enemy. So closing uh, this screen for now, Um, we are now tasked with our um, land and naval movement following the air phase. So we're going to zoom in and start off our amphibious assault of Sicily. This is a new feature uh, in War in the West and it is done by using the um, amphibious HQ. These are units specifically made for amphibious assaults and well, how they work is that in advance you prepare a target uh, location and um, the unit will then start preparing for an invasion on that location and using the attached troops. Of course preparing takes time and the longer you wait the better prepared you will be usually. Um, in this case however since it's part of the scenario the unit is already prepared for the right location so I'm able to launch my um, units immediately. So I have selected um, my amphibious HQ and I'm going to press the invade button and it will start off the amphibious assault. So now the unit tracks a path um, from its location uh, to the location here and we can see it has been positioned uh, next to the island 
uh, with the ship figure, meaning that the units attached are on ships at the moment, and at the start of the enemy term, they will unload and fight uh, to, for control of the coast. So we're going to do this for all our um, amphibious HQs. Note that even though the weather might be good or the waves might be good, uh, crossing the water is always a dangerous affair and there's always the risk uh, of having attrition such as we see now or losing transports altogether. So the uh, invasion will be carried out by combination of American and British uh, troops, uh, even also Canadian troops are present actually and represented by the uh, indicating counter, um, and they each have their specific missions, although eventually it's our task of course to uh, capture the entire island. So here now, we jumping back to Sicily, we can see that our units are uh, prepared now for the invasion. So um, what we're going to do now is move up the rest of the units uh, behind these lines to get them ready to move in immediately next turn when the beaches are taken. Um, <coughs> also, to show you the um, uh, objectives for this scenario, we're going to quickly uh, select the, the toggle victory locations, and we're going to see flags of, at all the victory locations. So we land, we take these victory locations, but eventually you have to capture both um, the northwest as well as the northeast Messina of the island. Especially this is usually the tricky part. So scrolling back, we're now going to move our units um, into port and onto the transports and position them behind the invasion group. So here, for example, we're going to select the um, second British Special Service Brigade. We're gonna uh, go into movement mode. We're gonna move them to a harbor indicated uh, by the uh, icon, and we're gonna go into transport mode to um, move them behind the invasion force. Now the unit will trace a path again. If you don't can't be bothered waiting for for what's happening here, you can also uh, press the space bar like I did just now, and it will immediately go to the point where it needs to be. We're gonna do the same now for the, uh, for the um, infantry division here. Everything, uh, what I'm doing now, like switching the movement stuff, uh, or the movement modes, uh, can be done with hotkeys as well. Ouch, ouch. Uh, but I'm I'm using the mouse here to to show you to, so you can see exactly what I'm doing, although it's usually faster to uh, use the hotkeys. Um, <coughs> as you're mentioning in the in the chat there, um, yes, the uh, boxed edition comes actually not so much with a box but with a uh, a huge manual attached. Um, which is a beautiful hardcover, uh, hardbound manual, uh, very high quality, uh, over 300 pages if I'm correct here, and it gives you all the detail uh, of the games, much more of course than we can show here in the video. Um, there's also a smaller guide called the Player's Handbook, which is um, like this uh, video, an introductory uh, thing to, to help you get on your way quickly before you actually want to know all the details about combat, railroad supply, uh, um, railroad repair, uh, airdrops, etc. Uh, a preview of the manual has also been released. You can uh, see that in the chat as it's just been posted. Uh, it's all this information can also be found on the Matrix Games forums. There has also been uh, some after action reports have also been uh, place there, uh, which are definitely worth watching uh, or reading, as they give a great idea of how the longer scenarios play and uh, some of the strategies you can you can use uh, in game. So here we're going to use the uh, famous second U.S. Armored Division. Uh, they'll be uh, spearheading the, uh, the assault as soon as they come on land. 
uh, we don't need you. And uh, once the uh, land battle um, is, is taking off, uh, we are going to look a bit into the counters and the details of, of what these are, how these work. Um, most of you might be able, might already be familiar with them. Um, those of you who are completely new to the uh, to the series, uh, we'll we'll explain that, and um, so you'll be able to to better understand what kind of combat is going on here. And we have another transport sunk. As I said, it's never completely safe. Um, so we're going to move our units up, and uh, I might actually be forgetting a few. Uh, in this case. Um, however, after we've done this, there's one more important thing to do, and that is set our uh, paradrops. Um, the game f features also uh, paratrooper invasions, uh, another transport zone. And um, they work somewhat similar to the uh, to the um, amphibious invasions, um, though of course they come from the air rather than from sea. Uh, but they're already prepared here. I got my paratrooper groups here. I got some um, uh, some brigades uh, of the British, and um, I got some. Uh, I got the U.S. Airborne Division uh, as well. So these, um, as you can see, the first one here is already targeted. A hex. The rest has not. So these guys are ready to drop. And to do that, we're going to get into drop mode. Uh, in the air transport mode, and we can see the drop button appears here, and it will drop at the pre-selected uh, hex. And here we can choo uh, choose which um, units we want for the mission. In this case, we're just going to choose for the um, standard ones, or the ones selected by the AI, and we're going to press the launch button, and they will be trying to land here. Uh, of course, just like sea transport, or even more so than sea transport, um, paratrooper uh, drops are always a risk. Uh, flat guns, bad weather, enemy fighters, and even if everything goes, uh, or mo most of it goes right, there's always something that can go wrong with the drop, getting scattered or whatever. Um, so we have or uh, ordered our drops here in the blue hacks and here, and we're going to prepare the rest of the uh, paratroopers for a drop behind enemy lines. This is a bit risky, but it's, uh, it should be a fun thing to do. So we're going to select uh, the group. I'm gonna press target and we're gonna set a new airborne target. I'm gonna, uh, oop, hit me, misclick. We're gonna set a new airborne target and we are gonna set it here. And for this one, we're also gonna set an airborne target here. And we're gonna try and prevent the enemy uh, from retreating to Messina and Mass, uh, blocking their uh, retreat. And we're going to do the same for the uh, American 82nd, or the ones that aren't dropping immediately. So we're going to target, and we're going to uh, target. Right, so these are not going to drop next turn immediately. They are going to prepare for a drop behind enemy lines. And the longer I give them to prepare, um, the longer um, they will... Um, I'd say the better they will be actually prepared for the uh, drop. Uh, yes, I know this is a very risky move, but I'd like to show as much as I can of the, the way paratroopers work, um, as well as the naval invasions. So here we have uh, set our air directives. We have launched our first air phase. We have moved our invasion group into position, and we have ordered our paratroopers to drop. So having done all that, we are ready to uh, execute our turn. So we're going to end this turn now, and um, was I finished? Yes. We're going to end the turn now, and we're going to see the, the German input and the turn resolution of our amphibious assault. So we have some uh, f our landings going on right now. Um, 
unfortunately the wrong map mode is selected here making it uh, not easy to see what actually happened uh, we can see however that the uh, airborne division gets destroyed uh, in its attack and um, so that was one field launch already so we're going to increase the speed of the combat resolution now And again, this is stuff you can get into full detail if you want. Um, you can see who is involved, you can see the, uh, the damage they are doing, um, whether they are retreating, shattering, surrendering or routing. Uh, all these things you can have a uh, handle on. What's actually happening in the battle? What's the morale? What's the supply level? Are they within range of their HQ? What are the terrain modifiers? And of course the leader modifiers themselves. So a lot of stuff uh, happening around here then, as our units are coming on land, uh, we're taking some losses, but overall it seems we managed to push ourselves uh, onto the island. And here we can see uh, the different uh, air interdiction missions, so you can see who has control over which uh, uh, sea lane, seeing how many um, sorties are being um, carried out over the different sea hexes and um, it allows you to determine uh, to an extent like what regions are safe for patrol what regions are safe for transport and what are good um, places for invasion etc so having carried this out uh, and we're uh, again it's our turn we're going to get a um, report of the losses um, we can see that we have suffered actually uh, quite significant losses uh, this turn though overall we hope uh, well the loss of the airborne was was very much uh, a problem so we're going to close this now and we're immediately uh, faced with the um, automatic air directive creation. We're going to close this for now because we're going to look at the situation in Sicily and see what has happened. And as you can see the um, air or the amphibious HQs have uh, pushed on land and all the attached units have been brought on land. We don't however have a lot of information on the enemy uh, or where they are. Uh, we should get more after our um, air missions are carried out. So, um, our troops are ready to land, but first we're going to carry out our air missions, see if we can do some recon and um, decide what would be the best uh, approach. So we're going to open the uh, automatic air directive creation again, and we're going to let the AI manage the air bases and air troops is another uh, button to reduce micromanagement. Uh, if you want it, again, you can ignore it and, and do everything yourself. It's really the flexibility um, this game offers. And um, having done a lot of air superiority, we're going to try and focus a bit more on ground support now that our troops are actually coming on ground. And we're going to um, close the amphibious support south because we're going to try and move as quickly as possible out of the direct amphibious uh, movement area. Um, so we're going to change that. And in this case, um, we're going to go for a bit more interdiction at, as opposed to airfield strikes. So having done that, we're going to uh, set our air directives again. So the uh, computer will load up the orders, setting the task for the different units, and we are going to execute it. Uh, if you want uh, a bit more... change the detail levels. Uh, you can also uh, look at something here and, and check the messages of all the different missions that are uh, at different moments. Uh, 
and you can of course check back and look at the different graphs of what's happened and what's going on. So in this case, the air losses for the enemy are, are increasing, um, whereas ours are, are lower than last turn, at least for now. Um, if the uh, sound of the of the game is too loud, let me uh, let me change that real quick for you then. Right, uh, I've turned down the sound a bit. Uh, let me know if it's better now. If it's still an issue, I will uh, turn it down further. Uh, thanks for noticing, uh, historical gamer. Uh, so now having done this, uh, we're gonna try and expand our beach hat. Um, looking at the area we control, we can see it's only the immediate vicinity uh, of the landings. And um, enemy control doesn't mean that there's an enemy unit everywhere. It does mean, however, that there might be a unit and uh, movement points for our, or it's, it's harder or slower to move through than friendly area, of course. Um, so going to look into a, a, a hex uh, specifically might be a good idea. We have a bigger image of, uh, of the hex in question here. We can see that each hex has uh, two values on it. Uh, you can modify the meaning of the values, but by default, as they are now, uh, they mean the combat value, which is like uh, an abstracted number of the effectiveness of the unit in combat. This, of course, does not, by definition, take into account the different terrains or external factors that might influence the course of battle. But it gives you a decent idea of the, of the, of the value or of the strength of the unit. And the um, 15 here indicates the amount of movement points. Uh, it doesn't mean it can move 15 hexes because a hex costs different movement points to cross depending on the terrain. Are they roads? Are you using real roads? Perhaps even in which case you use strategic movement points. Um, but I are, is it friendly territory? Is it enemy territory? Um, uh, are you mountainous, uh, forested, well, etc. Uh, these are also used to carry out attacks uh, in general. So if you end somewhere with zero movement points, you won't be able to launch another attack after you are uh, you have actually arrived. Um, the counter is a standard NATO counter, uh, indicates the type of unit it is, and of course the two crosses indicate that we're dealing with the division here. Uh, if you want more information on the unit uh, in question, you can select it. You get uh, a lot more information. You get a more accurate combat value number, uh, which is not uh, rounded um, as the ones are on the counter. And um, you get the amount, you get supply information, you get the different elements, the uh, air support that is available, and uh, if any units are assigned here. Um, you also get to see the amount of troops available. So in this case, we have over 15,000 infantry, 172 guns, and zero um, tanks or armored fighting vehicles. And we can also get even more detailed information by just hovering our mouse over the counter and we can see uh, all the types of units that actually uh, make up the unit. So now we're going to try and expand our beach hat and move into Sicily. I'm going to use the American troops here to the left to push into this area. I'm going to try and use the British troops to push north into Messina as quickly as possible. So first I'm going to move the units that are already on land. I'm going to see if I can try and take some territories from them and um, move into uh, their territory. So as you see, um, movement uh, depends on, on the, or the amount of movement, on the movement points, on the type of terrain, and whether or not we're moving through enemy or friendly territory. Of course, if you're without supplies or without fuel as a tank group, um, your movement points will also be um, <laughs> severely limited. And here we can see that we have spotted, or we know that there are enemies there. We don't really know the size of them. Uh, we don't really know uh, what type of unit it is. We just know that there is enemy activity in that specific area. In this case, I'm going to move you um, a bit east to capture this airfield. And then I'm going to bring my units on land. So again, I have to get them to naval transport mode to move them into the docks and um, get them off the ships and let them roll on. Of course, in this case, they won't have a lot of movement points yet. Um, 
because they just got off the ships. So uh, you might imagine that has brings in some delay. Um, the next turn, my uh, armored division should be able to spear out the assault or the invasion. Uh, meantime, we're also going to bring up our HQs and selecting this HQ, which is this uh, uh, second uh, US core, um, we can see that these units are attached to it and uh, these three, where you see the blue lines going through, I see that this guy, or this division, is in blue uh, uh, rounding and this one in red and in red, which means that it's outside of HQ. Um, range so I have to move it inside HQ range to get all the um, bonuses that the HQ provides including the attached uh, support units and you will see that when I move it closer that they will become blue so blue is usually um, also in this game the color you want to see rather than red HQ units themselves uh, cannot fight, so they will always try and keep distance between them and the air uh, and the enemy. Um, it's something to take note of. So you never want them to lead at the forefront. They're also unable to uh, to uh, join in an attack or to go into enemy uh, territory by themselves. So that's it for the American troops. We have used up most of their movement points, as you can see. Uh, we're going to look at the British now. We haven't spotted any uh, any enemy units nearby, which means they're probably um, back, uh, retreated already, um, and set up a defensive position. Most of them seem to have retreated to this area, defending Messina, which of course is the stepping stone uh, into Italy proper. And um, so we're going to move up our... Um, 5th Infantry Division to capture uh, one of the uh, victory locations of Catania and um, in doing so uh, some of the local AA guns or, or small units um, that are too small to present by with a counter um, or that are not considered as mobile units in general uh, are surrendering. We can move up one more bit, let's see if that's useful later on. I'm just trying to grab as, ban as much ground as I possibly can to take away uh, the flexibility of the enemy. And uh, if you're wondering why is uh, this one a uh, different color, it's a Canadian division. So you can see the different nationalities uh, of the units based on the color of the counters. Right, um, a question here on how supply is handled by Shunwick. Um, as um, Gary uh, is replying here, this is a very uh, long and winded response. Uh, because the supply is incredibly detailed, um, you have different supply bases, um, which are uh, available in the form of depots, and we have different access points. Each depot has different... Um, As uh, how do you say? As different priority set, and they grab um, supplies coming from the production centers or from off map, and uh, they'll be carried in, um, and then we distribute it from there. Of course, these supplies can be destroyed, and the longer the supply lines, the more uh, of your motor pool will be used to actually carry the supplies to your troops um, from these depots. So it's very important to keep these depots close to your front lines and um, keep building them. Though this is not so much an issue here in the Sicily campaign as um, in this case there are quite a lot of depots on the island by default and the uh, lines are not as stretched as they would be for example when you're fighting um, in France. Uh, it's also very worthwhile to delete or destroy um, your own uh, supply depots if the enemy is approaching. Um, let's start off with you. So we're going to move this HQ into uh, range of its subordinate units. 
directly behind the enemy lines. And you're coming in as well. So it was a very uh, uh, quick uh, talk on the principles of supply. Again, uh, there's a lot more to it than, than, than possibly uh, uh, we're able to cover, even if we did a stream on the supply system alone. So we're loading off our troops and um, we're trying to get the, uh, the invasion going on. We're going to get you off the ships and we're going to have you move up as well, close to your subordinate units. Um, Now we have another question here. Do we? Yes, we better move in our. Uh, Malta command as well. And we lost another transport in doing so, uh, which is of course a shame. Well, it's good to have the HQ within range of our uh, supporting the unit. Right, um, so having done this, we're going to look at the uh, area uh, or the paratrooper units uh, we have assigned to the different um, drop zones yeah, behind enemy lines. And we have to decide whether it's worthwhile to start dropping them already or even possible uh, if they have enough preparation points, so to speak. Um, so here we have these guys for example and um, it's going to be a risky choice to decide if we want to drop them already it's basically there's a fairly good chance I'm killing my own man here although for the sake of the stream it might be uh, an interesting experiment to see if we can try and drop them so let's just go ahead and uh, see what havoc we can wreak behind enemy lines so again, we get to choose um, transports we want to go with it. And it's carried out immediately. We're going to speed it up a bit. And the defending force retreated and we managed to land, although not at the um, preferred hex. I'm going to drop you as well. And our airborne division is destroyed in a fatal drop. Uh, so another um, <laughs> major, major loss uh, on my part for taking uh, way too much risk. Um, and this guy is now, or this brigade, uh, is now behind enemy lines all alone. So we're just going to try and, and drop the rest as well, although we have limited uh, transport capability left. So we might not be able to drop all of them. and another uh, destroyed division after a fatal drop. So uh, I would probably be fired now um, in this case, or at least replaced by a much more capable person. However, since this is just an exercise in a game, I'm allowed to continue, and uh, at least it gives you uh, something to learn from my mistakes here. So having done our, uh, uh, our parrot drops, um, and um, having moved our units, we're going to press the end turn and uh, see what comes next. So the enemy is now doing what it has to do. The AI is thinking uh, through its moves. Um, Moving his units is trying to get into a decent position. Uh, the yellow are indeed the Italian units, the grey being uh, the German ones. Um, it should be said that if it is uh, unknown, um, if a unit is Italian or, or German or whatever uh, nationality, it is, is uh, shown as a grey counter.
Right, so looking into our losses screen again, we have suffered significantly more losses again than the axis, uh, which is of course highly unfortunate. Um, we'll hope that now we're finally on land, we're going to do better. Uh, I'd like to uh, keep the air directives the way they are, um, continuing to fight on one hand for our superiority, and on the other supporting our ground forces uh, moving up. Right, so having done that, um, we're going to take a look at the situation in Germany now. Uh, again, we don't see a lot. Uh, we see they're dinging in here. Um, we're going to execute the directives and hope we get some more information after some scouting. Um, it's in by our air units. Right, so again, we had uh, excellent weather, how surprising in the beautiful Mediterranean. Uh, we did a lot of sorties, uh, lost a couple of planes though. But I'd say overall, we're doing a decent job. Um, so now our units are, uh, are fresh, they're already on land, they're close to the enemy, so we're going to see if we can push the enemy away from this hex. And, and push them through here and perhaps even try and line up as soon as possible with this uh, lonely uh, airborne regiment. And our American forces are going to push up as well, so let's uh, start with that. So as we, uh, let's take a look at the victory locations again. We have three of them, and uh, these three in the north we are now going to try and capture. So moving up uh, past the coast, we are um, going to see if we can grab some more ports and uh, grab some more towns on Sicily. Our armored division is able to move quite rapidly, so we're going to take the risk and move them close to the, to the victory tax. And they spot the enemy, and we can see a number of Italian coastal divisions. Um, not the strongest units, but when stacked like this, uh, in defensive mode, you shouldn't just uh, be rash. And after my field uh, airdrops, I, I'm inclined to play a bit more safety, although it's probably not the wisest idea. So I'm going to move up my HQs to support my units. And just to see how much ground I can take again uh, from them. And um, I'm going to move up the paratrooper units as well. Let's take the little station here able to see and get better eyes on the enemy and let's uh, move up uh, let's see let's let's try and initiate some combat here there are two types of uh, of uh, combat there's the hasty attack uh, which is shown like this or the uh, deliberate attack which uh, can be done by holding the shift key although it requires uh, a number of uh, action points So now I'm trying to, with my second armor, I'm trying to engage uh, an Italian coastal division uh, which shatters as a result. Of course the famous pattern um, does not disappoint. Now here we're gonna try and uh, get as many people to the front line and do a, a joint assault from two hexes uh, onto the enemy. So we're gonna move in the Canadian division. Um, we're gonna move in division here and let's move you guys up as 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the uh, brigades. No. To uh, cover the flank. Right, so now we're going to try and do a joint assault um, by uh, these groups, by these stacks, and um, we're going to uh, try and attack this combination of um, Italian units. We're not sure what they are, but we know they're Italian, and the 1st Falschkremjäger Division. Uh, Falschkremjäger are the paratroopers, uh, of course. So selecting the stacks and holding shift while moving over the other stacks. We're going to see that they select all of them, as we uh, see here to their right. And pressing shift now, we can see the symbol change is, is, is an explosion. And this means um, this shows the determined attack mode. And the determined attack takes up more movement points than the hasty attack. As a result, it's more uh, more organized attack, and it's usually more effective. So we're going to get in details now. The lines you see are uh, different air support units that are also engaged um, as well as some anti-aircraft unit and the defending forces uh, are holding unfortunately so again I am uh, having a very tough time here meanwhile I'm going to try and see if I can move my um, airborne uh, unit into the enemy uh, uh, enemy airfield Although, so far, things are not looking that well. Uh, we can move up these guys. That one is still in range. But so that's fine. Then we're going to uh, press and turn. So these are the different things you do within the turns. Uh, a turn is one week. Um, as we can see and uh, indicated by the date to the top right. Um, every scenario, by the way, is playable from both sides and playable in multiplayer. Uh, the game uses uh, the sliver in the TBM plus plus system as well, which makes um, like play by email multiplayer modes uh, extremely uh, convenient to do as it uh, uploads the save game to the server for you. Right. So getting our uh, report again and our air directive screen. Let's see what the um, Axis troops have been up to. They still have a fairly strong defensive here, although with the removal of the uh, Felskrimjäger division. Ah, I'm unsure. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a close one. Um, the enemy has some armor here as well, so I'm not too confident about that. Uh, in this ca uh, side, however, I'm a lot more confident. So let's uh, set our air directives again. And um, I'm going to lower the air superiority and we're going to try and really pound uh, the enemy with ground support. Focus highly on interdiction. Uh, one thing I could have done, um, indeed, uh, as um, gets pointed out by um, Jeb Gamer here or by uh, Joel Billings, is uh, flown in supplies to the airfield where my unit just went to avoid attrition uh, it's one of these things you easily forget when you're constantly talking while playing um, so it's a mistake on my part to not do that although it would have only uh, my mistakes are stacking up for now so let's see if we can still claim as much as possible before we run out of time 
we're going to press the end turn here and ex or execute our directives forgive me and we're going to see what happens again So as we've been uh, doing less, uh, we've been less effective in the air, of course, with our fighters for now. Though hopefully it's uh, still enough in order to keep an edge over the enemy in this regard. Um, our losses in aircrafts are also a lot higher than the enemy's, or uh, our kills, sorry, our claims. Of course, when you have a lot more, you have more to lose. Um, looking back onto the uh, onto the map here, we can see there are a significant number of stacks here around Palermo, and uh, the enemy is still dug in here at a very nasty uh, place, and has a significant number of, of units here. So we're going to bring in uh, the air division to add to the stack. And we're going to again try and push um, through. Here we're going to surround the uh, enemy around uh, this victory hex. And we're going to try and capture that while we move up sections to scout the enemy around Palermo. Taking these units, we're going to try and do a uh, determined attack against the enemy. Uh, perhaps it considers my uh, my air unit uh, in the back there not as too much of a threat, which <laughs> I wouldn't really do either. So a determined attack by the second airborne or the second armor division, uh, in combination with a lot of other U.S. infantry division, including the first here, um, we are actually taking control of the city, and the enemy surrenders, which is of course um, the most the easiest way for us to to deal with them. We're gonna move our armor division in place, and next turn we're gonna try and push. And now we're gonna do take a, a risk and do another push here, and see if we can uh, do something to more effect. Oops, no. Select these units. And try again for the uh, for the attack. This time we manage to push the enemy away, although they do not break, they do not shatter, they do not surrender, they simply retreat to the next hex, which is of course uh, very annoying for me. I'm going to move in my units, but I am not able to push any further. And only one unit is able to do a uh, Determined attack. Of course, our attacking uh, combat value, as you can see by the tooltip, does not is way lower than their defensive combat value, uh, which basically indicates that an attack is probably not profitable. So we cannot do that. So we cannot really, um, as you can see, we cannot link up with our airborne directly. But our airborne unit itself can make some effort and try and link up with our units, which was what we're doing now. Although, by in doing so, in linking up with them, uh, I am making an escape route possible for them. The 
So having done that, um, we I'd like to keep these guys as they are, um, just to keep the enemy in check. Uh, they don't have the power to make a significant attack against the enemy. And I just hope they, they won't all retreat into Messina. Uh, yes, Zekblad, it might have been better to leave it there, uh, although I felt so guilty for the uh, for the guys I dropped to death that, uh, <laughs> and then leaving these guys behind enemy lines for so long. Uh, I felt I owe it to them. So the enemy is indeed reorganizing and um, making use of the space that just um, came free because I moved away my paratrooper division or my paratrooper group. So we can see from here and the enemy is also retreating from our front line probably trying to get back around the city of Messina. So I'm going to try quickly one more turn because we're running out of time here. So I'm going to set the air directives and I'm going to see if we can close enough to Messina to uh, make a capture possible. So we're going to keep the air directives as they are. Uh, yeah, the turn times, of course, they depend on the on the computer you're using. We got pretty decent rig here and also depend on the size of the scenario. This being an introductory scenario uh, makes it go uh, pretty fast. Um, though even on the bigger scenarios, even on lower PCs, it's, it's definitely uh, still very much playable. And also depends on the amount of detail you want to see during the turns, during the combat resolution. So we're getting our results again. I'm going to click right through these. And um, yeah, uh, you're saying the NG shows the supplies. Here we can see the uh, the different depots and the priorities they have and the uh, uh, stuff they've stored. Again, this is something that we, we cover briefly, but it goes into much more detail. And you should really uh, have look, through the, uh, look through the manual. Uh, for for the details on the, on exactly how this works and how this runs and how you can use it to your advantage by denying the enemy the uh, supplies they they so they need. I'm gonna try and send the units up to terrain, and the enemy unit surrenders. The coastal unit. This is very good for me indeed. Seems that some of the German uh, division have already evacuated Italy. Actually, um, sensing the impending doom by the powerful British and Canadian forces, and of course the uh, extremely talented general that made a couple of airborne units drop themselves to death. So here we can see we uh, a lot of AA is surrendering to our troops as they march up to the uh, city of Messina. and moving in uh, further units while we keep our flank covered. Very good. Um, as you can see, we have the city of Messina now under our control. The enemy uh, stuck between the pass here, uh, and the next turns it would be you would be trying to cut them off and and starve them out. Although this is uh, not something we're gonna get to at this point. I'm just gonna we're just gonna try and take the city of Palermo, um, so we can uh, claim all the victory axes um, as being in our possession. The release indeed is tomorrow. Uh, 
Robert. So um, you can get ready to uh, to jump in. So we're going to select our units and we're going to try and get the uh, the deliberate attack again. There's no reason for it to be at least one. The defending force is held uh, because I was too uh, hasty, or well, not in the attack itself, but I didn't commit enough troops in this case. Um, so I'm gonna try to do another one with the movement points left. And we got some units surrendering, some units retreating. And um, they surrender the last coastal divisions on the uh, northwest of the island. So we're going to move into Palermo. And now we have all the victory locations in our possession. Of course, theoretically, in the, the, the game lasts another two turns. So uh, these units could still be annoying. Um, they could be uh, reinforcements coming from mainland or something. Um, we are able to cover for now. Um, so this is the basic scenario. We covered the movement, we covered the, the, the counters, we covered the new, um, or at least we touched upon the um, air war as it's been um, improved upon greatly since uh, uh, War in the East. There's really a lot more detail to it. Again, it's almost as detailed, or perhaps it is as detailed as the land combat is at the moment, taking into account as many uh, variables and letting you command or um, choose as many or micromanage as much as you want uh, but I'm really great fan of the uh, of letting the AI choose that for you and you can even uh, like many uh, players in the beta test also preferred let the AI set the bases based on your directives and then go in and um, and, and tweak that to your own liking so that's uh, what we have to cover uh, for today. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, I'd like to thank um, the 2 by 3 games guys who are here in the chat with us, uh, answering the questions and uh, providing more detail than I could possibly do. Uh, they are the real masters of the game, of course. And um, is, um, they've created a beautiful piece of work here that, uh, again, is releasing tomorrow on matrixgames.com. So go ahead and grab it. We've got a beautiful uh, hardbound manual for you if you want to buy a um, physical edition. Of course, there's also just a digital edition if you prefer that, and you'll get the manual as a PDF version, as well as a player's handbook, which is allows you to jump in um, a lot quicker. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this preview and uh, giving you a little bit of the feel of the game and I hope you will join us next week as we're going to play another game and uh, show you something else. Thanks again everyone and I'll see you next time. Cheers! <laughs>